The Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord's mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. We want to thank God for every person who's going to be worshiping with us this morning. We are glad to be here just getting back from a long weekend of celebration on our 27th wedding anniversary. We're so excited. 27 years. Denise and I have been married together. And we're so glad uh, that she has decided to hang in here with me all these years. We're so grateful to God for that. But listen, our family is in various parts of the house today. Denise is actually over there sitting, uh, chilling. And we're going to just say, hey, Denise. Hey, y'all. Hey, we're so glad to be at church this morning. Thank you for everybody who's coming on with us. And uh, I'm about to loosen this tie a little bit because I'm I'm hot, and uh, I'm trying to be cute because it's my anniversary weekend. But uh, but I'm hot, so and 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 I'm getting fat, so I have to like take my time to unloosen this stuff. Uh, Y'all, give me a minute. Hold on, I can't sing until I get this until I get this loop. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that ain't working. Oh well, I'm stuck with it now. All right. Well, listen. Come on, y'all. Let's get ready to go into the presence of the Lord. We're so glad to have everybody that's coming on with us this morning. We're going to get ready. We're going to sing and we're going to worship. And then we're going to get into the word of God this morning. Come on. Y'all know how it goes. Come on. Even out there where you are, come on. Clap those hands with me. Come on. Clap those hands with me. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Say it. Every praise, Every praise is to our God. To there you go. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, I hear you. They sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Come on, y'all, we're going to take it up and say, every praise to our God, every word of worship, one accord, every praise, every praise to our God, everybody ever sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. Hey, y'all, I see y'all coming on in. Come on, let's go again. Every praise, Shirley Valentine. Hey, to our every word of worship, word of worship. Wanna call. Every praise, every praise, 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 Every 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 praise
every praise, 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 help me say, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, to our God. Come on out there in Facebook land, all over, clap your hands in this place. Hallelujah. We praise God today. Thank you so much for our family that's coming to the room. I wasn't expecting them to come in here. I thought they were going to be another part of the house. But I thank y'all for being with us today. So grateful that they're here. Miss Myra Cliff, so glad you're so faithful. Oh, my God. If we don't do nothing for nobody else in our lifetime, we're going to do something for Myra Cliff. We're so glad to have you. With the Shirley Valentine, I know you're out there. I saw your fat name a few minutes ago. So glad to have you out there with us. Uh, Denise, who else online today? Because I can't see him. DeMarco? Chandra Wilson. Chandra Wilson, glad to see you. Rachel. Rachel, hey, girl. Uh, Chandra Woods. Chandra Woods, what's up? Foreman. Yeah, Foreman, Foreman, I meant yeah. Foreman, Foreman, Foreman. Charlene Russell. Charlene Russell, hey, girl. That, listen, that's our member. I don't know what church she's supposed to belong to, but she need to fill out an application for Jarvis College Christian Church. That's our member. All right, go ahead. That's it. All right, well, listen, here's what I need y'all to do right now. Jones. Jones. Barbara Jones, glad to see you. Now listen, here's what we're going to do. I want y'all to right now, I'm going to get into the word in just a few minutes. I want y'all to take a moment right now, and I want y'all to share, share, share. Henry, move this way, just a little bit, you blocking my hair. I want you to share, 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 uh, share, 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 turn that ceiling fan on. Share, 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 share. I want you to start a watch party. I want you to get, I want you to make sure that right now uh, that you're getting everybody in here because Jarvis College Christian Church is on the air, and we're getting ready to go into the word of God. And this is going to be wonderful. Turn your volume down here. But we want to thank God for, for being with us today. Listen, I want to get ready now to read from the word of the living God. And uh, we want to share from God's word today. We're going to close out our series uh, that we've been sharing uh, from the book of Gideon. Uh, the book of Gideon. From the book of Judges. Uh, we want to share from the book of Judges. So let's read this again today. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7, and we want to go to Judges chapter 7, and we want to read today uh, from the word of the living God. Uh, if you get your Bible, let's go to Judges chapter 7, Judges chapter 7, and we want to read together now from the word of the living God, and then we're going to get ready to, to, to um, get into the word of God here in just a few minutes. I do want to encourage those of you who are uh, who desire to do so, each time we come together, we want to make sure that we partake of the Lord's Supper, and so we want to encourage uh, those of you to get your communion elements. If you have an actual communion set, get that. But if you don't, would you please make sure that you get uh, some kind of juice, some kind of cracker, some kind of bread. Um, and we want to take of the Lord's Supper together here at the end of our time together today. Let's read now from the word of the living God. Uh, the Bible says in Judges chapter 7, uh, beginning in verse 1. So then Jerubbaal, Gideon, all, and all the troops with him rose early. And they camped beside the spring of Herod, the camp of the Midianites, was it to the north, in the valley below the hill of Moreh. Um, you have too many, the Lord said to him, you have too many warriors for me to allow you uh, to defeat the Midianites. As it is now, the people of Israel would, would just deny me the credit and claim they had won the victory on their own. Go out, so go out and tell your army, any of you who are afraid and trembling are free to leave Mount Gilead. After this announcement, 22,000 left. So Gideon reduced his army to 10,000. Then the Lord said, you still have too many warriors. Take them down to the water, and I will sift them for you. When I say this one will fight for you, then that one will go with you. But when I say this one will not fight well for you, this one will not go. So Gideon led his army down to the water. Then the Lord said, all of those who let water the way a dog drinks, put them to one side. And all those who go down on their knees to drink, put them on the other side. 300 of the men lapped up water by raising a hand to their mouths, and all the rest went down on their knees to drink. The Lord said, I will use these 300 men who lapped from their hands to deliver Israel and to give the Midianites into your hand. Send all the rest home. He kept jars and, and trumpets uh, from the army and sent them back to their tents, but distributed the jars and trumpets to the 300 who stayed with him. The camp of Midian was in the valley below him. That very night, the Lord spoke to Gideon. Get up, 
and attack the camp of the Midianites because I have given you victory over them. But if you have fe any fear, take your servant Pura, scout out the camp, and listen to what they are saying. And afterward, you will find you are strong enough to attack. So Gideon and his servant Pura approached the outpost of the armies in Camden. The Midianites and the Amalekites and the other people of the east were as thick as locusts in the valley, and the camels were as numberless as the sands of the seashore. When Gideon arrived, he overheard a man telling his neighbor about a dream he had had. The man said, in my dream, a barley cake rolled into our camp. It came to the, to the tent, and it hit it so hard that the tent fell over. It turned over and collapsed. Then the neighbor said, that must symbolize the sword of Gideon son of Joash, the Israelite. The God has given him victory over Midian and all its camp. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship. He went back to the camp of Israel and roused them. Gideon said, get up. The Eternal has given you victory over the army of Midian. We strike now. He divided the 300 men into three companies and he gave them all trumpets and empty jars with torches placed inside of them. Watch me do what I do. When we come to the outskirts of their camp, do what you see me doing. When I and my company blow the trumpet, I want all of you to blow the trumpets all around the camp and to shout for the eternal and forgive Gideon. So Gideon and the 100 men who were with him came to the outskirts of the Midian camp just as, the, just as after the middle of middle watch had been posted. They, they blew their trumpets and smashed the jaws they had brought. All three companies of men blew their horns and, shout, and shattered the jaws at the, about the same time. They held the torches in their left hands, held the trumpets in their right, and they shouted together, a sword for the eternal and a sword for Gideon. They, insert, they circled the entire camp and woke the, Midianites, uh, woke the Midianite force abruptly so that the Midianites cried and fled. When the three other trumpets sounded, the eternal set the Midianites fighting against each other with their swords. The Midianites ran away in panic toward Beth Shittah, Toward Zeriah, to the border of Babel Mahola, near Tabith, the men of Israel were summoned out of Naphtali and Asher and from all Manasseh, and they joined in the chase after the Midian army. Can we say, man, for the word of the living God? Y'all, we're going to preach on this in just a few minutes. I want to encourage everybody, again, go ahead and share this, share this, share this. I want to invite us right now to a time of prayer. I want to invite us even right now uh, to, to a time of prayer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I pray uh, that you will that you will join me right now as we begin to go before God. We, if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do uh, need the Lord right now. And so we want to we want to invite everybody right now to let's go before God and let's pray. Let's go before God and let's pray. There are a number of things about which we need to pray, and so we want to we want to lift up some of those things. First and foremost, we want to continue to pray pray for the family of George Floyd. And they're right now going through the lengthy process of finalizing his life and the, the memories of him through funerals, etc. So we want to pray for them. But we also want to be prayerful right now for all of those protesters who are out there. We want to pray for them for their safety, but we also want to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for them, that they would have the courage to get up and go do something. Nothing changes until good people decide they want it to change. And so we want to pray for them. We also want to pray for our police force. I don't believe that every police officer is bad. So we want to pray for those, for those police officers who are, in fact, trying to live up out their creed. We pray that they not be targeted. We pray that they not be held suspect. But that they, too, will be able to do their job and do it in safety. We're praying also for our president of the United States. Yes, our president of the United States. He's the elected president of the United States. We don't have to agree with him, but we need to pray for him. We want to pray for every congressperson, the vice president. We want to pray for the entire uh, administrative staff. We want to pray for all the Congress. We want to pray for the Senate. Come on, y'all. It's time to pray. I know I'm calling things out, but I'm asking you right now, would you begin to go before God and pray? Additionally, we want to continue to pray for Travion Fluellen, who's one of our students at Jarvis Christian College. Travion is battling COVID-19. And uh, right now, uh, he's been back and forth to the hospital. 
Um, but as of yesterday, when I when I text him, um, he said it's starting to clear up. He just has to get past the pneumonia now, and we praise God for that. We want to pray for Whitney Tyler, one of my nieces, who is in the hospital even now uh, because she has some infection or something. So we want to be praying for her. We want to continue to pray for Tamaria Brown. These are prayer concerns that have come to me in the last few days. Albert Hernandez. We want to continue to pray. Thank God we want to also pray for this, this class of 2020. As these students are, some of them are beginning to have their graduations. Thank God for them being able to have these experiences. But we also pray for their futures. Come on, y'all. We're getting ready to go before God. We're getting ready to go before God. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you heard all these prayers. And I cut the list short. But I could have kept calling names. I could have kept calling situations. I could have called circumstances. Father, here's what we do now. We are in a place where we need you. In fact, God, we're in such a place that we know we can't make it without you. It is impossible for us to make it without you. And so, Father, would you now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cause us, oh God, to be able to sense your presence. And would you even more, oh God, cause us right now to know that you're in charge <laughs> and, that, and that you literally are running all things. And there is nothing that is happening in our life that has the possibility of catching you by surprise. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lift up the President of the United States of America. We pray in the name of Jesus, the heart of the King is in the hand of God. So Father, would you in Jesus' name touch him? Where he's sincere, bless him. Where he needs to be corrected, correct him. The Congress, the Senate, the government of the United States, would you bless and would you cause, oh God, your glory to be revealed in ways that will be a blessing to your people and cause your name to be exalted. But now, Lord, I do pray today for Trayvon, and we continue to pray for Albert Hernandez, and we continue to pray for Tamaria, and we continue to pray for one of my former students, Favor, and I'm asking in the name of Jesus that God, you would prove to be God. Pray for Whitney. I call these names of God, and the truth is our prayer list is way too long for me to call everybody, but I ask in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, would you move on the behalf of your people? Show yourself strong. And we're not going to wait until we see it, but we're going to give you praise, and we're going to give you glory, and we're going to magnify your name, because at the end of the day, you're going to be glorified. And here's our faith. You're in charge of it all. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the up, the down. You, oh God, are sovereign and you're God. And so we thank you and we praise you that it is well in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Well, right now I want to invite us to take a moment to give. There are some of you out there uh, that you, you, you are part of Jarvis College Christian Church. And I see some of y'all out there. Tay Tyler Tarrant, good to see you on here. Amanda, good to see you. Mama, good to see you. I'm so glad to see all these people who are joining us. I, want, I do want to encourage you. Would you please start a watch party right now? We want to pray. Yes, ma'am. Shirley Valentine, I'm just seeing your message. We do want to pray Sunday, Monday morning. Uh, summer school at Jarvis Christian College will start. And we want to we want to encourage, we want to pray for all of these students. And we want to ask that they will that ask God that they will be blessed and that their minds will be sharp and that, that they will have much success this summer in the early start program at Jarvis as well as the summer school program. But then not only that them, but but every school that's going to be open in this summer. We ask that God will that God will be with them. Um, I do want to invite you to give now. I do want to invite you to give now. Um, there are those of you out there that you you love what we're doing 
uh, through the church. And believe me, there are things that we do uh, that y'all don't even know about. And that's the truth. Um, God has blessed us with a group of persons. One of them is online, on, online with us. Two of them, two or three of them are online with us. And then we have one, Miss Cliff, who's right here on Zoom with us. And here's the reality. These persons do more than I could ever name. We have a member who was who was stuck here in the United States from China. What y'all don't know is that the church was helping to provide some support for her emotionally, financially, physically, whatever. And, and that wasn't the pastor doing that. That was the members of Jarvis College Christian Church. And we want to thank God for them uh, because they have a they have a, a kingdom mindset. That's my that's my that's my those who know me know that's what I say. We are kingdom people with a kingdom mindset. And so we want to thank God for them. So when you when I say give, you literally are giving to something that is making a difference. As the fall of the year comes, we're going to be doing more for our students and to make sure that our students are, are well taken care of. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do today. Again, I owe Miss uh, I owe Miss uh, 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 Shirley Valentine uh, uh, a uh, an apology because I I did not call. I did not, so uh, you can you can you can beat me up. I'll be back on campus tomorrow. And you can get me. Uh, but here's what we're going to do: we want to encourage you to go to my cash app. Hey, Mary Stewart, glad to see you, Mama. I want to encourage you to go to my cash app, and this is what you're going to do: you're going to go to my cash app. You're going to put in dollar sign Rev said, and I promise y'all, I will make a, I will make a fiscal commitment. We will get the Give the Five finished set up this week. I'll, I'll get on that this week. In fact, I'll come by there tomorrow, Shirley, and we'll do that. But if you go to my cash app, Rev said, every dime that's given that, that is designated to the church will go to the church. Okay? I, every dime that's given to the church will go to the church. Rev said, those of you who want to sow to me, you can do it in the same spot. Just designate it. This is for the pastor. This is for the church. I thank you so much for those who are giving. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, those who, want to, who are giving right now, would you multiply the seed that's sown in the name of Jesus? Amen. I do want to take a time, take a moment, just a moment. Go right now. Go right now to your cash app. Go to your cash app right now and go ahead and give. Go ahead and give. No amount is too large and no amount is too small. I dare say this. It's our 27th wedding anniversary. There might be somebody out there that said, you know what, Pastor, we won't be a blessing to y'all during your 27th wedding anniversary. We make no demands of anybody. But there might be somebody who say, you know what, Pastor? We know that students are going to be coming back. They've been through hardship. They're going to need money for school and books and all this kind of stuff. The church wants to be able to do some of that stuff. So go. I turn not take so much time to ask you to give. Go and give right now. And we thank you so much for it. Y'all, we're going to get ready to get into the Word of God. We're going to get ready to get into the Word of God today. We're going to get ready to get into the Word of God. Grab your Bibles. Let's get ready to go get it. Those of you who have not yet gotten your cash, gotten your, um, your communion stuff, would you please go ahead and get your communion stuff? And let's get ready. I don't even know if I can sing the song. I ain't got much more. But I do want to get into it just a little bit if I can. See if I can. Hear me. I don't mind waiting. Ain't got no voice. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. I may have to scrap this. On you, Lord. Yeah, Miss Cliff, I ain't got no voice. I don't mind waiting. Henry's enjoying this. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. On you, Lord. Can y'all help me say? I don't mind waiting. I ain't got no voice. Don't mind waiting. That's not like Henry singing today. Don't mind waiting. On you, Lord. Said I don't mind. I don't mind way. I don't mind way. On you, Lord. Come on, they gonna take it up, but I can't. Hey! Said I don't mind waiting, I don't mind on you, Lord. 
I'm he's singing better than me. Come on, take it up again. Hey, I don't mind. I ain't got no voice, huh? I don't mind waiting. I'm going to end up on somebody on YouTube. I don't mind waiting. Oh, you Lord. Son, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. On your love. Come on, let's take it up just one more time. Said I don't mind waiting. Is there anybody up there that don't mind waiting? Can I see you, man? On your love. Yes, God. Said I don't mind waiting. Said I don't mind Just one more time. I don't mind waiting. Come on, start a watch party right now. Get ready to get into the work. You gotta hear this word this morning. Oh, you love. Say, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Say, I don't mind it. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Hey, I don't mind, I don't mind. On you, Lord. Said I don't mind waiting. Yeah, I don't mind. On you, Lord. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Let's go to Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Let's get your Bible. Let's go to Judges chapter 7. I want to I want to close this series out today in Judges chapter 7. In Judges chapter 7, I want us to pick our reading back up for this time in verse 19. Judges chapter 7. And I want us to pick up our reading uh, now in verse 19. I read it at length earlier, but now I want to just pick up beginning in verse 19, and I want to share uh, what the Lord has placed upon my heart today to give. Beginning in verse 19, this is what it says. So Gideon and the 100 men who were with him came to the outskirts of the Midianite camp just after the middle watch had been posted. There they blew their trumpets and smashed the jars they had brought. All three companies of men blew their horns and shattered the jaws at about the same time. They held torches in their left hand, held the trumpets in their right, and they shouted together. Then they shouted a sword for Gideon and a sword for the Lord. They encircled the Kentai camp and woke the Midianite force abruptly so that the Midianites cried out and fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, listen at this, the Lord set the Midianites fighting against each other with their swords. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the eternal, the Lord, set the Midianites fighting against each other with their swords. I want to preach today just for a few minutes from this subject. God's plan always works. God's plan always works. Work. I know I got a couple of people in the room with me. Would y'all just say it out loud for me and say, God's plan, God's plan. always works. Always. Listen, this is what I want to talk about today. God's plan always works. We've been, we've been reviewing this. Hey, Matt Harrison, glad to see you. Pastor Jeff Lane, glad to see you, sir. Um, I, I want to talk about this today because we've been dealing with Gideon for the last two weeks or three weeks, and we've been talking about this. And Pastor Lane, I want to, I want to close this out today because it's important for us to recognize where Gideon has come. We've dealt with 
the idea that Gideon was, in, was, in, was unsure, he was insecure, but yet we dealt with the fact that Gideon had a purpose on his life and a plan. We talked about the fact that Gideon made excuses and that Gideon did not want to go. Matt Harrison, we also talked about the fact that God tells him that he's strong even when Gideon feels like he's weak. We also went forward on Thursday, we talked about the fact that, uh, well, we did before that, we talked about the fact that you've got to have a plan, that Gideon goes forward, and Gideon literally chooses 32,000 men to go get that. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But Gideon chooses 32,000 men, and then God reduces it down. Here's the amazing thing. Then the Bible says, Miss Cliff, that what God does with Gideon is God then tells Gideon, I can't do what I want to do with as many folk as you have because they will want the glory for the victory. So what does God do? God reduces it down to 30 to 300 men. I'm, and then the Bible said, but when they blew the trumpet, let's get into it, y'all, for about 10 minutes or so. When they blew the trumpet, the Bible says God calls the Midianites to turn on each other, and they killed each other with the sword. I wish somebody would hashtag right now and just begin to hashtag it and say God's plan. God's plan. That's important. God's plan. Somebody need to hashtag it right now and just say God's plan. God's plan. Because God's plan always works. God's plan always works. Let me begin the sermon like this. God's plan. God always has a plan. And Miss Cliff, God's plan will always work. Hey, Michaela Humphrey, good to see you, girl. God has a plan. And God's plan always works. This is the third time I'll say it because it's important. It's almost, in fact, I'm probably three-fourths of the way through with the sermon now. God has a plan, and God's plan always works. I give you some historical evidence to prove it. Uh, do you not remember that the Bible says that God has Moses and the children of Israel? They're at the Red Sea. God has sent Moses down to Egypt. And when God sent Moses down to Egypt, Pastor Lang, God sent Moses down to Egypt. And when he sent Moses down to Egypt, the Bible says that he goes to Egypt. And while he is in Egypt, he, he now leads the children of Israel out after 10 plagues. And when, when he leads them out after 10 plagues, the Bible says that he goes down to Egypt. And then the scripture says they're standing at the Red Sea. And as they're standing at the Red Sea, Henry, the Bible says that, that he, he literally, he literally tells him, stretch out your arm. And when he stretches out his rod, God causes a wind to blow, causes the water to part. It stands up on both sides, and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. This is evidence that God's plan always works. Pay attention to this. The Bible says that Gideon, that Ezekiel rather, goes down to a valley that is full of dry bones. And here's what the Lord says. All I want you to do is I want you to speak the word of God to the bones, and then I want you to speak the word of God to the wind, and now the bones come together, the wind blows upon the bones, and then the scripture says, Michaela, that the bones come back to life and stand up an exceeding great army because God's plan always works. Somebody ought to be tight, hashtagging it right now. God's plan, hashtag God's plan. God's plan always works. I'll give you one more example, one more example, and then I get to Gideon. Here's what the Bible said. There was a man in, in 2 Chronicles chapter uh second chronicles chapter 20 um named that named jehoshaphat and jehoshaphat is that he's encamped about by all kinds of uh enemies the amalekites and the midianites and and the parasites and they're all around him and the bible says that while he they he is surrounded suddenly he gets a word from god and says god god says to him what i want you to do is i want you to go down but when you go down don't take a sword don't take, a, don't take a knife. Don't take any weapon with you. All I want you to do is take your voices. And here's what you're going to do. When you get to the camp, you're going to shout. And when you shout, you're going to win the victory. And the Bible says when the, when the, when the praise team goes out before them and they begin to shout, all of a sudden, Henry, the script said they began to kill each other. And as they began to kill each other, the Bible says that, that, that now Jehoshaphat and the Israelites win the victory. Why? Because God's plan always works. This is what happens in Judges chapter 7. God has a plan in place. And I want you to hear me. This is really important, uh, Micaiah Stop. God has a plan in place. And as God has a plan in place, here's what y'all have to understand. Tim Abel, God now tells Gideon, I want you to take 300 men 
And I want you to go down and fight against the Midianites. Now, let me tell you why this is, why this is important for us. This is the plan of God. Now, the problem is Gideon has decided he needs 32,000 men. I did my research, Miss Cliff, and I discovered that 32,000 men, or 32, an army of 32,000 was only about one-sixth of what the Midianites have. Mary McWilliams, good to see you. What, what Gideon now has to fight against the Midianites is only about one-sixth of what the Midianites had. And God had the nerve to say, Brandy Gray, that's too many people. Wait a minute. Hold on. We got a problem, Henry. This, this is where we begin to have a problem with the plan of God. And I need to stop for just a minute and ask somebody, who am I talking to? That you have faith to believe that God is at work. You have faith to believe that God is doing something, but nothing God is doing is making any sense to you. I, I need to know, am I talking to anybody? That when you see what God, it doesn't make sense that you will go 12 years of school and then all of a sudden you get to get to your high school senior year and all of a sudden here to now, you can't go to the prom and you can't go on the senior trip and you can't even finish school at the school with your friends and you don't have a graduation, but everybody that you love can't even be there. That does not make any sense. It does not make any sense, does it, Mary McWilliams, that there's some people that you think should be gone, but they live on and they're antagonists and they stay in power. But the people that seem to be good, they seem to leave here early sometimes. It does not make any sense. Sometimes, come on, I need somebody to help me. Help me, please. It doesn't make any sense. This is where the problem starts because Gideon, the Bible says, has 32,000 men. Listen, and Miss Cliff, God said, that's too many. I wonder who I'm preaching to on here in these last few minutes of me preaching, that when you look at your life and you say, and God gives you a job, God gives you a job, but Brandy Gray, the job that you got, it does not cover all of your expenses. It doesn't meet all of your needs, but God says, that's enough. That's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes with the plan of God. God's plan does not make Sense. Who am I preaching to that you can that you can help me by making a comment that you can that you can do something? Give us a thank you for the hearts and the light. So I know what you're saying. That God's plan sometimes does not make sense. But even though God's plan doesn't make sense, here's my word, and I'm done preaching. Henry, it may not make sense, but it does work. I'm done. I'm done. I promise I'm done after this. It doesn't make sense. But it does work. Please listen to what I'm telling you. The Bible said God tells Gideon, I want you to go down there, take 300 men, watch all God gives Gideon to work with him. Micaiah, watch all God gives Gideon to work with. Oh, this is about to shout me. And I said I was just going to talk and get through. Watch what God does. God sends Gideon down there with 300 men. Watch this. And then the only other thing they have, watch this, y'all. They don't have swords, they don't have guns, they don't have chariots, they don't have horses. Watch what the Bible says. All they have is 300 men against hundreds of thousands. And then they have a lantern in their hand and a trumpet in their hand. They have a lantern, they have a trumpet, and they got 300 men. Now, let me say it again. At 32,000, God said that's too many. 32,000 is one sixth of what the Midianites had, which means now God is sending them down there to fight against an army of people that, by the way, with 300 people, you don't look like you stand a chance. Notice again what they have. They have 300 men. They've got lanterns in their hand. They've got trumpets in their hand. And that's all they got. But what you have to understand is that when you and I go in, with the little that we have. Here's what we have to understand. Yes, we're going in with the little that we have. But ladies and gentlemen, when you have the little that you have and you add it to the big God that you have, you are guaranteed to have a victory. I need to say it again. I need to say it again. Henry, that was good to me. When you have the little that you have, but you combine it, add it to the big God that you have, then you are guaranteed victory. Marcus Cosby in Houston says the third time of the charm. Let me do it one more time. When you have the little that you have, uh, Robert Hubbard, the old folk here at my church used to say, the little becomes much. <laughs> when you place it 
in the master's hand. I need somebody to hear me. When you have the little that you have, but you combine it, add it to the big God that you have, then you are guaranteed victory. I need to stop for just a minute as I'm closing this sermon and find out, am I talking to anybody here on Facebook, anybody on Zoom, anybody out there on the internet that can be a witness to me, that God is bigger than everything that you can face. I don't mean, ugh, I don't mean to become Baptist in here today, but here's what I know. That, that, when Mo, that when Daniel goes into the lion's den, all he has is a prayer, but he takes the prayer and he combines it with God, and God causes the lion's mouth to shut up. I wish y'all heard what I said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're in a fiery furnace. All they got is a worship, but they take that worship and they combine it with God, and God causes the fire to be cool so that when they come out of the fire, they don't even smell like the fire that they've been through. In fact, the Bible says they don't even smell like smoke. I need to know, is there anybody in his chalet that will help me close this sermon to celebrate the fact that God has a plan and God's plan is going to work. Well, I'll close like this. I'll close like this. I, okay. I said, <laughs> okay, watch, watch this, watch this. Watch. My son messing with me, but he don't understand. He don't understand how. I don't think he do. He don't understand how how how, how I know God's plan to work. Uh, I, I wasn't going to do this, Miss Cliff, because I'm trying to quit. But Ron Hubbard, watch what God said. Watch what God did. God didn't make Gideon kill the enemy. God, oh, I wish I had an organ right now. God didn't make, didn't make, didn't make Gideon them kill the enemy. But Ron Hubbard, God called the enemy to kill themselves. Let me, okay. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. You got some opposition up against you. You got some obstacles standing in your way. You got some stuff that's frustrating you to no end. Can I suggest to you, you take the little bit that you got. You combine it with the big God that you got. And you won't have to move the enemy, but God will move the enemy for you. I wish I had time to preach like I feel it. But do I have anybody out there that will help me and just, just type it on this wall right now and just say, God will move your enemy. God will move your enemy. I need to see somebody type it. God will move your enemy. God will take it. God will make a way. God will give you victory. Now, I'm closing. I'm done. I promise. I said it seven times. I promise I'm done this time. Ronald Hubbard, here's how we know as Christians that God's plan works. Because the Bible says in the beginning, God created humans. And when God created humans, humans sinned. Watch, watch, Rachel. I'm done. When God created humans, humans sinned. Oh, God. And death became the, the lot for human beings. But you got to understand that God is not reactive. God is proactive. God doesn't wait until it happens. And then God does something. God does something before it happens so that when it happens, it's already done. Okay. God doesn't wait until after it happens to do something. Rather, God does something before it happens so that when it happens, it's already done. You got to read your Bible. Your Bible says that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world so that when we sin, God had already covered it. Oh, I love it. When we sin, and that's why I know that the ultimate plan of God will work. Denise, because your Bible says, as the Baptist used to say, that one Friday evening, <laughs> Jesus died on Calvary. Yeah, y'all know he nailed his hands and they nailed his feet and they pierced him in his side. And your Bible says that when they pierced him in his side, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he died. But let me be real, real clear. That's not how the story ends because your Bible says three days later he rose again. And if I'm talking to any saved folk on here today, anybody that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, I'm talking about those folk who used to lie. I'm talking about those folk who used to steal. I'm talking about those folk who used to cheat. I'm talking about those folk who used to get high. I'm talking about those folk who used to drink. If you not on here today, I'm sorry, I'm talking to the wrong people. I'm talking about the people that hadn't stopped it completely, but you're different now than you used to be, then you are the testimony that God's plan always works in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, I want to invite you to bow your heads. I'll quit. I want to invite you to bow your heads. I want to invite you to bow your heads. I want to invite you to bow your heads. God's plan always works. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We're going to get ready right now to pray. Because somebody right now Somebody right now, 
Somebody right now. Somebody right now, you, you, you're literally sitting here and you're looking at your life and you're saying, with colorful language sometimes, this doesn't make any sense. And I hear you. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Gretchen, I hear you. It doesn't make any sense. Why do I have to go through this? While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Because somebody right now, you're about to give your heart to the Lord. Here's the reality. I bring this up all the time, that I'm blind in one eye. An old lady told me one time, said, have you ever thought, if this hadn't happened, you wouldn't see things the way you see? Let me give you the word of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. And so today, I want to invite you right now. Let's go before God. Let's pray. If you hear, if you listen to me today and you say, Pastor, I need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. This is a good time. This is a good time. I want to invite you right now. Come on. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. This is a good time. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Come on. Let's go before God. Let's go before God. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody out there right now, they need to join Jarvis Christian Church. They need to be a part of this community of faith. Would you cause them to send the email right now, sdinkins at jarvis.edu. Cause them to say, I want to be on board with, with this pastor, with this people. Even in the online environment, we want to be a part of what God is doing. But somebody out there right now need to accept you as their Savior. And so, God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, would you right now begin to move upon their heart and save them? You're able to save. You're able to deliver. You're able to set free. Do it even now for your name's sake and for your glory. Somebody's heart is broken and they don't understand. But would you give them peace that passes all understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus? And everybody said, Amen. I want to encourage us right now to get our communion elements. Oh, I learned to depend upon the word. I want you to get your communion elements. I thank God for the mountain. Thank him for the valley. Thank him for the storm he brought me through. Cause if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve me. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do. Come on, get your elements. Through it all. Oh, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Oh, yeah. I've learned to depend upon His Word. All right. I want to encourage you. And let's get our communion elements as that continues to play. My wife and I are celebrating 27 years of marriage this weekend. We were talking just the other day, and I say this as we get ready to take our communion. If y'all knew <laughs> all the stuff we've been through in 27 years, it might scare you. Because there's more to the story. But the blood will keep us covered. I'm convinced of that. So here's what the Bible says. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Bible says he took bread, he broke it. He said, this represent my body, which is broken for you. Then he took the cup, a cup of wine, really. 
and he poured it and he said, this represents my blood, which is shed for you. It represents the new covenant. But he also said, examine yourself. And so we want to pause for just a minute. You know you have sin in your life, and all of us do. Would you go before God right now and just ask God, to forgive you. The Bible says that if you confess your faults, God is faithful and God is just to forgive you and to cleanse us from all the right. So would you go before God right now? And God, as they go individually, we come collectively asking that you in the name of the Lord Jesus would forgive us of sin. Set our hearts in alignment with you. Thank you that the blood keeps us covered, but we want to be right. We want to be upright before you. And so I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that we be saved and know we're saved in Jesus' name. Now the Bible says that on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. Whatever your particular piece is that you have to represent the body of the Lord Jesus, would you take now and eat all of it? I love trust in Jesus. Then the Bible said he took the cup and he said drink ye all of it. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. You got to get out. But to God be the glory. For the great things. <laughs> I got to go. Um, thank you for the valley. All right, I got to go. And I, I thank you for the storm. He brought me through. If I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve it. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do. All right. Um, I want to make this announcement. Through it all. All right. Okay, that's good to me. Through it all. On this Tuesday, I want to encourage everyone to join us for our national prayer call. This Tuesday, you see it on the screen. I've invited the chaplains from Wiley College, Texas College, and Paul Quinn College. And they will be joining in with me on our national prayer call. Jarvis will host the national prayer call for this HBCU prayer call. Uh, we're going to do prayer for a series of these. But we've invited uh, Dr. Jamie Capers, who's the dean of chapel at Texas College. We've invited Dr. C. Dennis Williams, who's the dean of chapel at Paul Quinn College. And we've invited Dr. Dominique Robinson, who's the dean of chapel at Wiley College. And I'll be hosting them on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we want to invite all of you to join in. Please, I want to say this with all due respect to everybody from Wiley and Texas College and Paul Quinn and all that. Listen, I want this line full of Jarvis and Jarvis Christian College and Jarvis College Christian Church people. So look, there's the numbers on the screen, 978-990-5000. The access code is 325-812-POUND. And I want to encourage us to call in at 11 o'clock and we're going to be praying. If there are prayer concerns, would you please send those to me? Please, ladies and gentlemen, send me your prayer concerns because we want to make sure that we're praying for you on that day. So National Prayer Call, HBCU chaplains, local HBCU chaplains, will be this Tuesday at 11 a.m. Wiley College, Texas College, Paul Quinn College, hosted by Jarvis Christian College. And so we want to encourage you uh, to be with us on this Tuesday at 11 a.m. Finally, there are those of you who just came in and you just getting to us now. I do want to encourage you. You do have an opportunity as we close to go out and give. Please go to my cash shop, dollar sign Rev said. If you're giving to the church, designated to the church, just say for church. If it's for the pastor, please say for pastor. We thank y'all so much for being with us today. This has been a blessing. This has blessed my life. Go forth, my brothers and sisters, knowing that God has a plan. And God's plan always work. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you peace 
in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Miss Cliff and all of Jarvis College Christian Church, we love y'all. We're going to talk this week. I'm going to call y'all because we need to schedule so we can sit down and just talk. All right. God bless y'all. We'll see everybody this week. God bless.